Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at this album here. It is a Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers album Hypnotic Eye. So I'll just be doing the usual thing in this video, giving a bit of background information about the album, then showing you my vinyl copy of it here, and then look at each of the album songs in detail. This is uh, Tom and the Heartbreakers 13th uh, studio album. It was released on the 28th of July back in 2014. Now I was... Um, uh, vaguely familiar with Tom Petty, like when this album and um, like came out. Like I don't, I think this was certainly like one of like the first like Tom Petty albums at which I bought actually because actually because like, when, like it came out like I remember like there being like a lot of hype around it. Like certainly like, I think it was like James Lack like Rock Boy Six Eight Zero like it actually got me into Tom Petty. Like I like interested like in him and um, like and he was like a big fan of this album. So like yeah like that was like prob that was probably like, one of like, the reasons why. Like, yeah, I'm like, so, like, into Tom Petty, like, nowadays. But this album followed um, 2010's album Mojo, which was a kind of blues album. It's not one of my favourites of Tom Petty's. It's very one-dimensional. Just not really a fan of it. This album, though, kind of builds on it. It is very much like the same formula. Like, it's the same uh, It's the same band members entirely. Um, the same producer, like, as well. A guy called um, Ryan Ulate. Um, and like yeah, like it is just like yeah, and like and like yeah, it's just like a sort of like a similar vibe, um, like to Mojo. Now the sessions uh, for this album took place over a three-year period, beginning in 2011. And stylistically, as I said, it is fairly similar to Mojo, but for me this one, it's just got a bit more urgency to it, a bit more like rock-driven sound to it. Really reminds me a bit of like their classic stuff like from like the late 70s, like going into like the early 80s. Now commercially, this album was quite successful for Tom and the Heartbreakers. It would be his only album to top the US charts, um, and it reached number seven here in the UK, which was his busy, which was his biggest success here since Into the Great Wide Open. And critically, the album was also very well received. It was nominated for the 2015 Grammy for Rock Album of the Year. So yeah, like generally, like a well loved, um, like well received album. So I will just show you my vinyl copy of it here. Um, this is my copy. I believe it is the one from the box set, like which like I've got like what covers his later albums on vinyl. Like, but like also like I had this one like before I got that anyway. So there's a the cover. I quite like the cover to it. It's it's quite it's got a sort of retroy sort of feeling, especially like with like the song titles like on the front and there's the back of it there. The gatefold looks like this. Which I'm not too crazy about. It's yeah, you maybe would have preferred a nice picture like off the band because as I said there's not a picture of them anywhere like on here. Like in fact, um, you do get um, uh, uh, that was a wee hype stick like was on the front and a download code as well. There you've got a in lyric insert, so that's just that. And it says when each song was recorded, who plays what on each track. So that's very nice. And the record itself is on the reprise label, um, so like old style recreation of it there. And that's the record. So yeah, that's the uh, vinyl looked at. Okay, so I'll now go over each of the album songs in detail. So there's 11 tracks in total. So I'll score each track out of 10. And we use those scores to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. Okay, so it kicks off with a song called American Dream Plan B. Um, which is a good song to kick, off, to kick off the album, I think. He sings it kind of uh, quite low like in like, his vocal register very sort of like casually sings it he sings like from like the point of view like of a character like he's trying to make it big in the world he sings like one of the lines that like, my success is anybody's guess but like a fool and betting on happiness um, and like this sort of like very sort of like a uh, grungy sort of like verse that sets up the chorus really nicely which is very euphoric you've got a lot of like nice harmonies on it like i'm like lag i like so i cannot beat that lyric um, like I've got a dream, I'm gonna fight till I get it right. And yeah, um, it is just like the two sort of like the two styles like of like the song that's like compete competing like against each other, like that sort of tension between the verse and the chorus, what really holds the song together, I think. Um, so yeah, um, for me, would get a nine out of ten for that one. Next track up is called Fault Lines, which just comes crashing in with this really sort of like rumbly bass playing like from like from like Ron Blair. Um, and it's just a relentless rock of this. It keeps up the pace of the album. Lyrically, it's a bit more darker, kind of about the fears of aging, but musically, 
it is just really up the I love the interplay between Petty and Mike Campbell and um, plus like I said like Ron Blair's bass like just gives it a real sort of, like a rumbly sort of feel to it it's a fun track like to play along to like on guitar and it is just a, for me a definite highlight on the album so yeah for me Fault Lines would get a 10 out of 10. is called Red River which um, in some ways is a bit like a sort of like a petty by numbers song this like I mean it is very characteristic like of like of like songs like from like his past but that's not really a bad thing it is it is a great sound it's a great style like which he's developed and honed like throughout the years I love um, the way the song sort of like goes like on like a little journey like I like the verse like is like sort of like yeah like all like fair enough sort of like nice like classic Tom Petty but then the solo, like where kind of everything drops out, uh, out and it goes into this sort of dreamlike stance. Quite interesting and really effective. And then sort of like suddenly, um, like Mike Campbell's blaring guitar solo comes in, just really shines through. Lyrically, maybe a little abstract. It's quite, it's quite sort of like randomly sort of pieced together a bit. So like I and the walrus, like sort of style, like imagery on it doesn't really sort of like um, make sense like as like a lyric but it doesn't really need to um, and it is a good song um, so for me that one would get a 9 out of 10. And, I'm a full -grown boy. and then we calm things down a bit on the album which is uh, definitely what we need to do at this point uh, for a song called Full Grown Boy which as I said change of direction is quieter almost jazzy a little number this one here Ben Montench's uh, piano sits really nicely alongside Mike Campbell's very smooth, very silky guitar lines. Petty delivers the song with a relaxed sort of like croon like to his voice. I mean, the song isn't a favourite of mine. It's not a song which I tend to put like say like in like say like my favourite Tom Petty songs. Like if I was making a playlist of that, I probably like wouldn't like include the song like of that. But it is good on the album. It adds some much needed variety to the mix. And yeah, I think it's a really strong song. So that one would get a 8 out of 10 as well. This up is called All You Can Carry. And this song, um, we again uh, turn up the guitars a little bit more on this. Um, it's kind of, again, its foundation is another solid guitar riff. And lyrically, um, it might be about Tom himself and how he sort of like his sort of stances like throughout like the years like and like how like he's sort of stood up like for like his fans and like sort of like against like sort of like, the music industry like he sings like on it like no one said I didn't have your side no one can say I left without a fight um, and yeah it is a really good song and um, like again like Hamble's riff is is like really effective it's just maybe a little bit similar in sound and style to the first uh, three songs but it's still very good so overall that one would get an 8 out of 10. Is Power Drunk. Don't get for me a song called uh, Power Drunk, which closes the first set, and it's maybe the first hint of filler on the album. I mean, it's not a bad track, and um, lyrically, I'm not a massive fan of the song, it just doesn't really connect with me. Um, but the guitar playing on it is very good, as as per usual. Um, it, uh, as I said, it just doesn't really stand out much on the album, so that one would get a 7 out of 10. Like a okay, and then the next one up, which opens up side two, is called Forgotten Man, which is a upbeat rocker. Again, it's maybe quite uh, self like referential, maybe like autobiographical, like lyrically. Um, like he's sort of like singing, like I feel like a forgotten man, and so sort of, like just trying to like sort of like address against like legacy and like that. Um, I mean, as I said, it's maybe what we've come to expect. I expect, like, in terms of sound, like, from this album, doesn't really add much to sort of like, to sort of like, the range of like sounds like on the album. Um, and, and there's something else that puts me off, like, with the song. I'm not sure like, if it's maybe like his vocal performance, like, or like what. Um, like, like, yeah, there is just something like what just doesn't quite do it for me, like, with this song. I mean, it's still good, it's just not great. So I would give it a 8 out of 10 for that one, Forgotten Man. And the next track up is another slower one, um, and it's again another song which um, isn't a, a massive favourite of mine, but it's a good song on the album. It's called Sins of My Youth, which is a, again quite autobiographical song again. It's, it's quite um, sort of like a full of regret, this one, sort of like confessing like his sins. Um, I like the musical sort of backing like on this. It's, it's a, almost like Latin flavour to it. You've got very interesting like drum pattern 
drum pattern like from like Steve Ferroni. Plus I think it's like a vibraphone or something. Gives the song a bit more warmth, like a little bit like of like a change like in sound. And like yeah, like kind of like it is just like a nice slow song. Um like which like which is like what we need like at this point on the album. So that one would get an eight out of ten. You could be high. The next track up was uh, one of the singles from the album. It's a song called You Get Me High, uh, which is a rocker and it's a great song. This is uh, certainly one of, for me, one of the catchiest things he's done, probably since like the Full Moon Fever days, like to be honest with you. Like it is just, it is just one of these, it almost sounds like it could be on like Damn the Torpedoes or something, full of lush harmonies. And like I said, very catchy this song here. Like he's not forgotten like how to write a really great like pop song. I wish the song might have like, done a bit better, like sort of commercially. I don't think it charted like anywhere, like as a single really. Like I, did, I don't think it got much airplay, like to like, be honest, like with you. But it is a great song, a great sort of classic Tom Petty song there for me. Yeah, maybe not lyrically the most advanced, like on the most sort of like um like arty, like or like, sort of like and um, creative like lyrically, but it's just the music on this what really does it for me. And um, so yeah, that one would get a ten out of ten as well. This is a burnout town. It's full of dirty Next one up is called Burnout Town, which is, um, for me, uh, one of my least favourites on the album. It's a kind of Dylan-esque song, and that's probably for me, I mean, like, I'm not a massive fan like, of Bob Dylan, like, as it is. So, like, when, like, he's sort of, like, trying to, like, impersonate Dylan, it doesn't really work for me. Um, he, he sort of more, sort of, like, he speaks a verse, like, more than sort of sings it. And, and it's got the kind of plodding rhythm and these, like, harmonica bursts, like, in it. Um, and, like, yeah, for me, um, it just doesn't do too much for me, this song. It's a song which I'm almost kind of tempted to skip over, like, a little bit. Um, like, but, yeah, Burnt Out Town would get a 6 out of 10. Shadow people in shadow the next one up which closes the album is called Shadow People which is quite a long song to finish the album it's about uh, six and a half minutes this one and it, for me it is one of the stronger ones on the album it kind of begins with some nice piano and then it goes into this kind of slow sort of stodgy groove but you've got some again really nice guitar lines like from Mike Campbell and there's interesting structure to it but it's but there's not much of a song like in there for me it's more like of like a band jam this to sort of finish the album um and yeah like it's a, a half decent closer um like but yeah like isn't a sort of a um, highlight for me on the album okay so overall this album would score 82 percent so um i think this is a strong album here from tom petty Um, i think if you were to look at it in terms of like our, in terms of his whole career i, I I think this would probably sit somewhere like in like the middle tier and um, I think it's definitely one of his best later albums I think it's a lot better than the likes of Echo, Last DJ, Mojo um, like it's just for me like got a real sense of urgency and um, great melodies like on it as well plus he's also like exploring a few different musical styles where whereas a lot of those albums like kind of like get like a little bit like one dimensional like whereas this one here like I think it, I think I think it remains mostly quite like energetic like throughout I think its strength lies in uh, Tom Petty's like at this time still very relevant songwriting very strong songwriting plus also the, the sort of like the interplay between all of the band members um, when they made this, they'd been together. I think it was almost forty years. Um, like so, like so, like every band member knows each other, like sort of inside out, really. Like from like, so, like Ben Montage's keyboards, like to Mike Campbell, knowing exactly when to put in like a little guitar fill, like or like um solos, which just fit the song just right. They were a really, really, really great band. Um, and like and like yeah, while the album in terms of musical style might get a little bit samey during parts like, of the second side, and um, like songs like say Forgotten Man, Power Drum shadow people maybe not being quite as strong as some of the songs earlier on on the album i think it still stands up like as a and um, um, i think it still stands up like as a uh, strong get uh, consistent listen now tragically this would be tom petty and the heartbreakers last album it wouldn't be tom's last al album though because in 2016 he released um, mud crutch 2 which was sort of like his like first band like, so, like he got them together and like they made like another album um, like and like of course like, he would like tragically die like in like 2017 so this was sort of like, the last like proper Tom Petty album and I think it um, was a great way to go out great way to finish his career um, but also shows that they did have a lot of steam and momentum left in them I, I certainly don't think this sounds like a last album like by any means like it sounds like a band almost kind of like just like getting going again like almost but yeah um, a great record here I would definitely recommend checking out like if, if like I haven't done so like already 
already like if you kind of like are just into like the early Tom Petty like all like his like more commercial stuff this is definitely um an album which is um almost like almost reaching the peaks of like Full Moon Fever and like Damn the Torpedoes it is that good so yeah I hope you have enjoyed my review of Hypnotic Eye um, and I will uh, see you all next time for the next video goodbye I ain't even sure